Record? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Hi kids, and welcome to Almost Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber, and we're here to answer your questions. Right. So Larry, let's start off with prayer, and let's get into our first letter. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for every child here. Thank you for loving us so much, especially this Easter weekend. Help us to celebrate safely in the best way that we can, that we celebrate what you have done for us on the cross, that you died and rose again to pay for the penalty for our sins. Thank you for that free gift. Help us to understand it. Help us to enjoy it this weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. So Larry, who is our first letter from? Our first letter comes from Kenny Mayday from Hannah Tills. He writes, Dear Bob and Larry, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of Tootsie Pop? Hmm. Huh. I don't think I've ever gotten to the center of a Tootsie Pop without biting. How about you, Bob? How many looks does it take? Well, I don't know either. I don't think I've ever made it all the way through one without biting. Maybe we should ask Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl? Yes? How many looks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a... Hey! It's Pastor Neil. He knows more about candy than anyone else I know. Hey! Pastor Neil? How many hey. looks does it take to get to the center, the Tootsie Roll Center of the Tootsie Pop? That is a really good question. Let me just take a look. Oh, I put my Bible down here. One, two. Oh, sorry. Two. Guess the world may never know. Sorry, Kenny. Um, do we have another letter? Yeah, here's one from Marty Diamondford from Silver Bell. He writes, Dear Bob and Larry, it's Easter, and I know that Jesus dying and coming back to life is why we celebrate. But why did Jesus have to die in the first place? Could Jesus have stayed alive and not been crucified? Wow, Marty, that is a great question. And for the answer, we have to travel back to the very beginning. When man was created, we were made to be in a relationship with God. And Adam and Eve were in a sinless relationship because Adam and Eve were without sin. We are the pinnacle of God's creation, but we still have rules. Now, what is sin? Basically, sin is going against God's law. It's doing something that says to God, you don't get to tell me the rules. I can decide right from wrong for myself. And even though God made us and knows us better than we know ourselves, we still want to choose our own way sometimes. Through the fall of Adam, when Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God told them not to eat from, well, we have all been born with sin. Right. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Only Jesus has lived a sinless life, and only he could die to pay for the penalty of our sins against God. Remember that God is loving, but God is also holy and just. He is perfect and without sin. And God's standard is just that. God says, be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And we can't. Not on our own. Before Jesus... God made a way for people to be reconciled to God, to pay for their sins, by sacrificing a perfect, spotless lamb every year. It was to show that God is serious about sin. And God hasn't changed. He is still serious about sin. That's why John, when seeing Jesus, said in John 1 39, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John knew that the Messiah was coming, and he would, sac he would be that sacrificial lamb of God who would die once and for all of those who put his faith in him. No more sacrificing every year, but for all of those who love and put their faith in Jesus would have their sins covered and removed so that they could be adopted into God's family as his dearly loved children of God. Right. Because we sin, we are deserving of the penalty of sin, which is being separated from God. 
In Romans 6 23 it says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord we are offered a free gift but we have to choose to accept it or not I can't make the choice for you we each have to make that choice for ourselves so you see Marty Jesus was the only one who could pay for the penalty of our sins no one else could have been the sacrificial lamb for us and this was God's plan all along God doesn't say oops he knew we would sin and need a savior let's see if Corey has a verse for us oh I don't think that's necessary I'll be right back Huh? Why? Not so fast, Donato! Yes, we love that song! You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Oh, Jean-Claude! What a surprise to see you! I thought you were off making some split pea soup or something. Oh ho ho! I see what you did there! But I'm not here to show you my split ability. I'm here to make sure you don't touch Quirty. But, no buts. Quirty, what verse do you have for us today? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Well, that's all the time we have today, kids. Have a wonderful Easter. Just remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye. Bye. Hey, Bob. I didn't have time to make resurrection love yet, but I did bring you back in a bag of beets. Uh, oh boy, I love these. Warm a few up in a bowl in the microwave for eight seconds, and they melt in your mouth, and they're so... Hey! The bag is empty! What? But it was full just a few minutes ago. Who was here? Who could have eaten the entire bag of chocolate eggs in under three minutes? <gasps> Pastor Neil! Oh, I was looking forward to eggs, too. Me too. You didn't even know that they were there. <laughs>